Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders Reptile Advice, uh, episode number 50 in the bag. So uh, I'm surprised we managed to get here, but thanks to everyone for the support, you've been great, um, particularly on YouTube, the way that you join in and the conversations and community we've got going are brilliant, so I really appreciate it. The other day we released a video that was based on our top 10 beginner snakes and you know, inevitably we got asked some questions about why didn't you include this, why, where would that score, what about this? So. I came up with a few of the sort of regular questions and I thought I'd explain away the rationale, maybe where they scored, it might give you a bit of an idea. Um, none of these snakes I'm particularly comfortable with, I know Paul's the same, uh, comfortable with, with beginners having, even though their scores were, you know, they're pretty respectable, they've been scored on the same five uh, fundamental variables or qualities that a beginner would look for in a snake. And you know they don't necessarily really score low. Some of these snakes are fantastically tame, but then it just they're, they're a handful. They're big. That you know, or, or um, if one decides that it's having a bad day, then yeah, it's going to be a bit of a problem. You know, so starting off, boa constrictor female, uh, boa constrictor imperata, so a Colombian common boa. Temperament 8.5, good as gold. Territoriality 7.5, they can be pretty food orientated, but once they realise they're coming out of the viv, they're generally good as gold. And I've known boas easily score 10 in both of these because they're just so laid back. Hardiness 7, so uh, this is um, Equatorial, Colombia. Um, yeah, but, you know, the, the, you push them too far. As resilient as boa constrictors are, they will develop colds, chest infections, pneumonias, respiratory infections. Adult size 2.5, a heavy bodied 9 feet, and this isn't to say that, yeah, some of the snakes that we looked at for beginner stuff, whether it be bull snakes, uh, black rat snakes, um, Taiwan beauties, yeah, they can be 7, maybe even 8, and mid Thai beauty, maybe even upwards of 8.5 feet. You know, they're going to be half the body weight of a Colombian boa female. Uh, they've got a fabulous appetite, uh, 9.5, you know, they rarely miss a meal. Overall score is 70%, so that's kind of where we would peg it against some of the stuff that we were looking at the other day, such as the corn snake that pulled out 94%, Dione's rat snake pulled out 93 and I actually, in total honesty, uh, I left out the rosy boas, and they scored 93 as well, so they'd have been joint second with the Dione's rat snake. So for comparison, notice we've got female, we'll have a look at the male. The male will score 4 out of 10 for adult size, so he's slightly smaller, a bit more appropriate. Rest of the variables stay the same, and the picture slightly improves with an overall score of 73%. So, you know, a good showing for the male boa constrictor, really. is generally going to be between 6 and 7 feet. Uh, definitely more manageable than the girl, but a lot more stronger, a lot more talky in its grip than some of the colubrids that we look at as beginner stuff and still very much capable of intimidating a novice keeper if it decided it was going to have a bad day. Um, then if we move on, some people might be screaming, move north, move north, but you know, if we do that, we hit the Central American bows, which is still the same family, although I think I, some have been reclassified into Sigma, I'm not overly clear on what's going on with the Latin names. Um, and we really trade down with uh, the temperament and territoriality, a lot more defensive, a lot more on it, a lot more triggered, particularly as babies, and this is a problem. Hardiness improves slightly because of the slightly drier climes, but things like your El Salvador's, your Mexico's, your Nicaragua's, your Crawl K's, yeah, they're going to be stroppy as tiddlers. Um, adult size uh, 4, that's for a girl, uh, which is similar in line to a common bow and male. Uh, but maybe slightly heavier in build, whereas the, the, the boys will probably score a five, five and a half. But even so, it's still not probably going to resurrect the score too much because of that temperament issue. The last litter of Nicaraguan motleys that we had in the shop were nearly all completely nutty and would just bite anything that went near them. And in contrast, the common boas, which are the larger boa constrictor, every baby that we've had, which was 15 or 16 of them in stock, Good as gold, not even attempted to bite. They're inquisitive and they'll come up and smell your hand, but just no aggression or outwards anger whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely, you know, if it was down to picking between the two boas, even though, weirdly, the common boa is the largest snake, I'd still be happier to supply a common boa than a Central American boa as a beginner species. Moving on, another one that we got asked about, the Woma python Aspidites ramsay. This is a fabulous snake. Gets to be between five and six feet long, and it's from um, the Northern Territory, Western Northern Territory of Australia. 
just a fantastic, fabulous snake. A little bit on the stroppy side is babies can be a bit hissy, may have a bit of a pop, but invariably will calm down brilliantly. And I've known adult womers score 10 quite easily on the temperament scales. Although in territoriality, they will always suffer slightly because they're very food orientated and they may just lunge before thinking. Uh, hardiness, with them being from such an extreme environment, being able to take the heat and the cold, this is where their, hot, their score really starts to pick up pace. Uh, adult size 5 because they are a heavy set, very strong, very talky grip um, python and you know a bad day with a woma, you, you, yeah it's going to be enough to put a uh, novice keeper off big time I would think. Appetite wise pretty much bomb proof, uh, I may have even been stingy, I may have even been inclined to give them a perfect 10 but they don't always immediately start born with big yolk sacks and they can wait a good while before they kick in with their food but a very respectable score of 74% which is higher than some of the classic beginner species such as Texas rat snakes and uh, black rat snakes. Moving on. So, now you'll notice rather than differentiating between sex and considering sexual dimorphism, we're now going to consider age. So, an Irian Gyre carpet python. These in the Darwin carpet, uh, Marilius beloita variegata, some people will refer to these as Harrisoni, um, are generally accepted as being some of the smallest and most manageable of the carpets. Um, and once they're full grown, you know, it's perfectly reasonable to have tame examples, although some will retain an edge of being on it being food orientated maybe lunging without thinking others will be irascible and in contrast some will be totally tame so a bit of a mixed bag but generally accepted as one of the more even tempered of the pythons hardiness this is truly equatorial like irian gyre is a pretty much um level playing field temperature wise year round this means then that they don't really get the harsh winters and as a result they can be intolerant as of us cocking the temperatures up Adult size 5, so you know, mid-range, you know, it's not too much of a problem. We've scored some of the colubrids from the beginner range uh, far lower than that. Um, so yeah, probably about 6 feet. They're very, very strong, very strong tail, really good grip on them and a very large head with impressive sized teeth. So again, is there a potential for us to uh, worry a beginner? Uh, appetite 9.5. Um, they once they kick in and they start feeding there's no stopping them they're brilliant excellent feeders and a very very respectable score of 70 percent so that was an adult irian giant let's now look at a baby oh dear oh dear oh dear so we've got a number of irian giant babies we've got coastal babies we've got jungle babies we've got some irian giant across coastals and baby carpet pythons are evil they are evil. I think that they are part of the devil spawn. And they just like removing pieces of my soul when I have to do the daily maintenance on them. Either that or chunks of my finger flesh, whichever they can get hold of first. A temperament and territoriality score of three apiece. Woeful. Hardiness is the same, potentially even worse than an adult because they don't have the uh, immuno maturity to deal with our cock ups if, we, if they do happen. Obviously, adult size remains the same, appetite remains the same, but a score of 54%. So, as you can see, things uh, do improve with age with a lot of boas and pythons. They don't come out of mum or dad or out of the egg uh, necessarily as socially compliant as the adults will become and this takes work and that work takes confidence and is that the confidence that a beginner has not necessarily now of course there'll be exceptions and these species I've listed I wouldn't necessarily go apoplectic about the fact that you were keeping them as a novice but I'm not necessarily super comfortable with the idea of somebody who's never kept before keeping any of these um, but I wanted to show you just for um, a greater level of clarity how maybe other species would fare on our five variables or qualities that we look at for beginner species. I hope you found that interesting. We'll be back with another episode soon. From me and Paul at Snakes and Adders, peace. <laughs>